Ducati takes a ride down memory lane with the introduction of its newest Scrambler family member, the Desert Sled. The Desert Sled, the bike that's built for competition. Actually, it's not built for competition, but it is actually built for riding off the pavement. Um, where the Icon, original 2015 Icon Scrambler, you know, is a little bit more pavement based, shall we say. This thing, you can kind of blitz off road a little bit. Um, it's got way more heavy duty suspension. Um, just the fork is th thicker, the shock is more heavy duty, uh, it's got almost 8 inches of suspension travel, and the spring rate's just, it's just much more heavy duty. We really haven't even ridden anywhere off-road to really kind of put the suspension to its test. Like it really, it's a little bit on the stiff side, but I like that. I like it a lot. And even though it is a little bit stiff, the action is still pretty good, you know? The action's real progressive, you know? And it's it's just a cool bike, man, you know? So, and you can just do whatever, man. You just ride it wherever you want, you know? You just go over here, and it's all good, and I'm gonna go over here now, and do what I want, and it's sick, dude. I do what I want on this bike. And there's Nathan over there. What's up, man? So, yeah, if you're looking for a, a scrambler that you can really off-road, this bike's it, man. This bike is a good bike for, for taking off the beaten path and riding around. The other crazy thing about this bike is just the engine. Even though Ducati engineers didn't touch a thing, mechanically um, it's still the same 803 cc l twin that we've always loved but they've actually in making it euro 4 compliant they've modified the the fuel and the ignition timing settings and the new mapping is just it's way better than the old bike it's crazy how how much better the the calibration of the fuel and the mapping is it's just it makes an entirely new motorcycle um, to me it's almost like they put a heavier flywheel on the motorcycle just because the power band is so much more mellow and easy and just controllable uh, another important change Ducati engineers did was they actually modified the the throttle tube this throttle tube is different now and it has a little bit more linear ratio when you turn it and open it and and that paired with the the fuel and the ig ignition timing settings it just makes a world of difference like this bike is just so much more controllable it doesn't have that snatchy feel like the original scrambler had and you know i, I like it a lot some people might complain that this thing doesn't have enough you know you know hit or 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 you know boost off the bottom but i love how trackable this engine is i like how you can just run it in second gear real low rpm and it just lugs up stuff it's 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 really awesome uh also another thing with that smoother engine is just the gearbox like this thing finds neutral great um all the gear shifts are excellent i haven't had a false neutral or miss shift all day and the transmission just feels real solid real clear engagement between each of the six gears i like it a lot probably the only one thing that is maybe not the best is just the gearing the gearing on this bike is a little bit tall if you were going to ride off-road a lot you would probably want to you know put a, a bigger rear sprocket on just so you can run it in second gear at a little bit uh, lower speeds you know 
So that's probably my only one little gripe is maybe the gear, the final drive could be a little bit shorter. But conversely, you know, when you're on the pavement, this thing, you know, you're going 60 miles per hour and it's only pulling 4,000 RPMs. And, and that's pretty cool, you know. Again, like not a lot of vibration at that speed. It, it's pretty good. There's Simon. So yeah, we're mobbing, man. As you can see, the Ducati is a very excellent looking motorcycle. It looks like it's built to rip off-road. And it's fun. And here's a guy in a tractor doing something. We're just gonna go around him. What's up guys? Spraying puddles, making a mess. And the Scorpion, these Scorpion trail tires, they work pretty dang good. Like I'm just so impressed by them. You know, they, they work great on the pavement. You know, they're not too squishy feeling. You know, they have good grip. And yet they work good on the off-road stuff too. Uh, the only thing that, where they're not super awesome is in the sand. Uh, in the sand, you know, that 12070 front is just, it's so big, so wide, that it pushes a lot of sand and kind of makes it a little sketchy. But you know, any street bike tire would be sketchy in those conditions to be fair, you know? The ergonomics and, and, and chassis, and it kind of favors a, a standing up riding position when you're riding off road. For whatever reason, like when you're sitting down, like even though we're not hitting like big hits or anything like that, when you're sitting down, the bike just doesn't like it. It just feels a lot more easy to control and easy to put where you want when you are standing up uh, and running it in second gear. First gear, just it, it just gets a little, like any dirt bike, it just gets a little unstable when you're going slow. Uh, second gear is definitely the way to run it. But I like this bike. I like the way it sounds. It's got that Ducati like charisma to it. Uh, my only complaint really with the sound, that was sick, is just the, uh, it can be a little tinny. It can sound a little tinny. The, there's some kind of rattling going on from the skid plate or, or the exhaust or just some kind of tinny rattling going on, you know, between two and 4,000 RPM. It's pretty faint though. I wear earplugs and I can't totally really hear it that well, but you can tell it's there, you know? So that's really my only complaint. I think if Ducati engineers could just get that dialed, get that, that, that harmonics better so it's not making that tinny rattling noise, I think this thing would be totally awesome. Again, we're riding with these bigger Ducati accessory foot pegs and, and they're definitely better than the stock rubber ones but i would like to see even bigger foot pegs you know like a big set of like authentic oversized motocross you know sharp cleated foot pegs would be awesome because you know your foot can kind of slip off a little bit through this stuff you know so but overall dang good machine dang dang good machine and fun like we're we're riding off road, we're doing it, you know? And this bike is just, it handles it, no problem, you know? So, here we go in that sand crap again. But this stuff can be sketchy as, as a, you know what? But we're still handling it, and it's still pretty good, thank God. Uh, which brings us to the price on this bike. Uh, $11,400, I mean, $11,400 for a motorcycle is expensive. It's a five-digit motorcycle. If I bought this thing, I don't know how willing I would be to ride it like we are right now and ride it off-road, you know? Uh, when you think about it, this bike's, you know, it's a couple grand more than the, than the first Scrambler Icon. And yeah, it's definitely better, but is it that much more awesome? You know, 
I don't know, like, I would have liked to have seen, you know, a $10,000, a 9995 price point on this thing. That would be awesome. But if you're looking for a bike that you can have fun on and rip around off-road and look sick and, you know, ride on the street, it thing's cool, dude. Like, this bike gets down on the street. Uh, the taller suspension, I like how much higher I sit on this thing, you know. Um, you sit higher, you got a little bit more, you know, control. The suspension has got a lot better action. Like I said, it's definitely stiffer, but the action is just, it's just way better, man. Like it just, it feels like it rides up on top of the stroke more and it doesn't pitch so much and it's just really good. Yeah. That's I'm talking to my fans right now. So that's Nathan right now, and here's all the guys. What do you guys think of the Scrambler? Yeah, everyone likes it. See, they like it. He likes it twice. He wants two of them. Another cool thing about this bike is the accessories Ducati makes for it. You know, they 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 have virtually anything you can get for this bike. You know, they have they have luggage equipment. You know, they have the foot bags I mentioned. They have the Terminioni exhaust. LED turn signals, you know, their their clothing and their wearing accessories are, it's amazing how much selection and assortment they have. You know, they have helmets, they have boots, they have jackets, they have everything. Uh, speaking of clothing, may as well for a minute talk about what I'm riding with today. Today I've got the Scorpion, the Scorpion Big Speed Gloves and the Scorpion Birmingham Jacket. Now this Birmingham jacket we did a product spotlight on. This is basically Scorpion's take on British wax cotton. You know, and I think it, I like this jacket a lot. Like every, when I first tried it on the studio, I thought it looked cool, but now I actually get to wear it and use it. And man, it's it's a cool jacket. You know, it it not only does it look the part, but kind of keeps you pretty warm on a, on a chilly morning. Uh, I haven't had a chance chance to, to ride it in the wet, but you know, just spilling some water on this thing and splashing through puddle, puddles, you can tell, you can see that the water just wicks right off the thing. So, you know, it's got a lot of pockets. It fits good. You know, it's not too over the top, not too heavy duty. You know, if you were riding in the winter, it wouldn't be quite enough. But for spring and fall riding, it's perfect. Uh, Bixby glove. I like this glove a lot. Fits me awesome. You know, it broke in real quick. You know, sometimes when you're riding off road, you don't want a glove that's too tight. And, and this glove's not too tight. It literally, size medium fits me like perfect style, you know? Okay, here we go through the death sand again. Uh, also wearing the Bell Moto 3 helmet. Uh, this is a throwback helmet, you know, kind of a retro classic line from Bell, and I like this helmet a lot. Like, some of the other people that, that have tried it said that they're, it's not their favorite, but for me, I think the helmet's great. It fits good, it's comfortable, it looks awesome. You know, yeah, you probably wouldn't want to go race, you know, a 30-minute moto with the thing on a 450, but just for riding around here, having some fun, looking cool, you know, the eye port is big. I got these 100% Barstow goggles and they fit really well in, in this helmet. Like, they're highly compatible with it and, and, and very cool, you know? So yeah, we were roosting a little bit back there. So, now I'll stand up. So, yeah, Moto3 is definitely pretty sweet, dude. So Moto3 helmet, the 100% Barstow goggles, like I, I love them, I've worn them for a couple years now and they just, they look cool, you know, they provide some element of safety. They're, they're a real nice piece of riding kit. I just think it's really cool what Ducati's done with this bike, you know, just building the Scrambler family, getting that that uh, that that real off-road kind of bike uh, into production, and so they're no longer like faking the funk. They really have an actual bike that you can ride off-road. I think that's cool.